Hey, my name's Noah, and I'm um, happy to be here. Wanted to tell you a little bit about my story and um, a little bit about my background, how it all started. My whole story began, I am born and raised in Orange County, California. Spent a little bit of time up in Northern California. My parents divorced when I was nine years old. During that time, it was a really traumatic time for me on uh, finding a lot of independence. Both my parents were doing their own thing at the time. Uh, I knew I had a gift of doing art when I was in high school and grade school winning awards and doing the typical stuff that you do when you're in high school, but had this opportunity to really hone the skills right towards the end of high school. Started doing business already at 16 for clients, business cards, corporate identity, branding, anything that had to do with marketing and advertising at the time. Computers weren't out, so everything was being done by hand. It was a really cool time on learning on other clients' work, how, how and what I wanted to do technique-wise and the whole look. I dreamt for years that I wanted to be a fine artist, you know. What it, but the, the big question was, what was I going to do, what was I going to paint, and how was it going to be done? Right out of high school, um, I got an airbrush from my family. I was then embarking on a whole new territory of photorealism and making things look real, but at the same time, uh, learning business and just a grassroots, you know, uh, school of hard knocks approach, if you will. Uh, rather than waiting for people to come and see my work or doing a gallery show, which is the normal model, I thought, how am I going to take this? and bring it to the world. So I thought, I need to find where everybody's doing you know, social time, time with their friends and hanging out. So what I started to do was packing up my gear, going to coffee shops, and going to different you know, club environments or anywhere there was a lot of people. I would get up, I would paint in front of people, paint celebrities, paint my fine art, mostly iconic huge pop art, portraits, celebrity portraits, things like that. I came at a crossroads in my 20s though. As I was building the company, I was doing you know the typical art lifestyle where I was living above a loft and, doing clients work during the day and then doing all my work at night. Really, really long days, you know, going to bed at four in the morning, getting up at eight. Just a lot of time invested into it. I ran into this crossroads where I had no idea what it, you know, what I wanted to paint. You know, how did I want to leave a mark on this world? Success of just climbing the ladder of success and being an artist making money kind of lost so, you know, it's a lure really early on for me. I came to know the Lord when I was nine years old, gave my life to Christ. Through the divorce and going through that whole process, it was really, really difficult for me as an artist. Not having that stability and that security, I really had to turn to mentors and really important guys and men in my life to help steer and guide and, and instill in me biblical principles that would keep me out of trouble. You know, it was really, really tough. I learned a lot. Um, I learned that I was, um, <laughs> my parents' drug addiction and alcoholism didn't manifest itself in me with drugs and alcohol, it was more like chaotic people. I prided myself on finding the most messed up person that needed to be fixed, and through that whole process I got validated, I felt better about myself, and I didn't have to focus on myself. You wonder how this ties into art, but it did for me. I went through a process in my late 20s where I was doing a lot of dismantling the false self of who I was. I was so sick of myself, I couldn't even stand being around my, my own time. I wasn't comfortable being alone. I then sat, sat down, unpacked over a two, two year period with one of my mentors, really who God wanted me to be and what my gifts were and how I was supposed to use those while I was here on this earth. Through that process I had an opportunity to look at my art through a whole different set of um, perspectives and lenses on an eternal level and the way that God saw them. It then was a time where I was able to break down why I was painting what I was painting for, and who I was painting for. That then took me through a whole new series of work. The Angel series, where you're looking at painting, paintings like, you know, The Invitation, um, Heaven Sent. This was my journal on canvas. I was taking what I wrote during the day, in the mornings, in my quiet times with God, sitting down and unpacking everything, and He would reveal things over and over through His Word. And the stuff that I would wrestle with, I would take those challenges, I would take the things I had been through, such as you know, Exhale is one of my mermaid pieces, you know, Breakthrough is one of my, my mermaid pieces, and I was just taking what it was I was dealing with and projecting it out through the art. The cool thing that I found was that people and collectors are going through those same struggles, those same challenges through life, they're going through the ups, ups and downs, and the art became healing for them. To me that meant the world. To me that now gave me a sense of significance rather than success, because no longer was I trying to go after you know, just trying to achieve, achieve, acquire, acquire. It's more about, hey, I realize what my identity is now, rooted and based in who Christ is and, and what God wants for me. 
following his model because my way completely showed where that could get me. Emotionally sick, you know, creatively I was locked up, I didn't know what to paint and why, but based on that new identity I was able to flourish in what I loved doing. I was able to then translate that same passion into creating art that actually had an impact. Whether the angels and the mermaids were healing for people, whether it was a, a way for them to feel like they're not alone and that they're important. I take my writing that looks like kanji writing or uh, more of like a Middle Eastern code and I'm able to make that into English with my own lettering, kind of a tribute to my dad's sign painting. The ornamentation and design and colors, a lot of a, a tribute to my, my mom and her uh, interior design work. And then I was able to take those kind of genres and think, hey, how can this be applied to help impact others around the world? We formed a relationship with Arturo Fuente Cigars and the family that they underwrite the Cigar Family Charitable Foundation, which ha actually helps the children in the Dominican Republic get food, clothing, schooling, medical, and dental where they never had that before. And now they have over 350 people and children graduating their class and actually going on with full ride scholarships. The greatest thing about the Fuente family is they serve others and they completely lay down their life for others. I align with that model and we have formed a partner and a relationship where they allow me to have the, the rights and the only artist in the world that has the rights to paint the trademarks of the cigar, of the cigar labels and the trademarks, the actual, uh, the actual bands on the cigars themselves for Arturo Fuente. So we've, you know, it's a great lifestyle for a lot of people, um, cigar aficionados, wine aficionados. And the reason why I love those images in particular is it allows me to play art director, make things look like an old movie. I love it to look like old Casablanca, sepia tone, warm, nostalgic, romantic, but also something that can be hung in a home and collected. So it's a it's a win win. We had a great opportunity. I did it in, uh, after high school, and as things started to pick up a little bit, bigger corporate clients like MTV started calling for you know painting the pool for Robin Big on that episode, or their horse trailer, or. Universal Pictures wanting to do something for the pink Suki car and Too Fast, Too Furious. That was a huge honor. There's a couple things that have happened along the way that really helped put things to a whole new level, but it also meant me having a lot of, uh, I don't know, you just want to make sure that you're flying straight and staying completely aware and alert because when corporate clients and movie production houses call, you know, got to be on your game. Um, got to paint tattoos for Pink on her music video, a chingy on a rap video. So it's been an application of so many different things where I can take this gift that God's given me and apply it in different areas that help impact people. I get to do what I love. They get to have something that they couldn't see before in their mind's eye but bring out. I love having that relationship with clients where creating art that is actually yours. We call them life stories where I'm sitting down with you and you unpack with me for a few minutes what your life's been about and the key things that have really happened to you and we encompass that into a piece. That's hands down one of the largest honors that I've ever had for clients. I just feel really, really grateful that here I am as a kid walking around wondering what it is I'm going to do and then God just unpacks it. it took a lot of surrendering of my self-will but it was by doing that. He revealed it in His time and gave me a hope that I could never have from anybody here on earth and um, it's just been awesome. One of the largest, probably the, the most pivotal parts of my life has been when I had the opportunity to work with Walt Disney Company. Disney and I formed a relationship back in 2004, creating one of a kind unique products for them such as Vinylmation, character development um, in terms of um, fine art applications such as you know creating the character in my own version and then putting that out in limited edition prints and, and sales in that way and that's just been, it's been awesome and it's been a dream come true because it was when I was a kid, and I used to go there throughout the summer almost every single week, and I'd be walking through Main Street thinking, man, this is amazing. It's, I mean, what person doesn't like Disney? It's just phenomenal. It's a part of everybody's life, and in some way or another, it brings you back to being a kid again. Here I've had this opportunity to build this collection now, develop product for special events, and it's, that's just been one of my favorite things of all time. The Disney relationship has been a very, very high calling in terms of the quality that's there, the legal demands that are there, and making sure that the character integrity is there. And I just really wanted to, I felt compelled that if Walt was still here, what would he want done? What would it be he's looking for and what is he looking to have done that hasn't been done before with the amazing icons that he already has? You know, stuff that he's created, stuff that he's birthed from way back when and how they've come up into all these different cultures and different contemporary lifestyles and clothing and just fads and trends and taking these characters and applying them to cool things like hot rods and 
drive-ins and you know just really really cool applications for things that we're enjoying today I just feel you know here we are we've got this really you know really cool event happening um, you're watching this video depending on where you're at and where you're watching it it's a cool chance for me to sit down and finally explain my life story a little bit why well, I believe I was put here and being given this gift and what I'd like to do with it I just figure there's a lot of things I could be doing this week. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be enjoying this time with you. And I'm uh, just very, very grateful for that. One of the other styles that you know are very, um, very much a tribute to my past is uh, one of the most solid things that I had every single Sunday was going for dinner at my grandparents' house. And she would always have these amazing bouquets of roses that she brought in from outside in her garden. And it was just a time of classical music, great food, beautiful flowers, a lot of beauty, and one of those solid... Um, firm, you know, Christian found foundations that I had in my life, and my father, or my grandfather, instilling into me a lot of wisdom on what really mattered. But talking about business and things like that. So, to commemorate that, what I wanted to do was paint as many florals as I could to help tell that story. It seems that floral work and looking out flowers and nature and bringing that into your house is just another way of just ex you know exploring and enjoying God's beauty and what He's put all around us. And that's nature is one of those things. You can go to different places on this earth and just be overwhelmed whether you're going to Hawaii, whether you're going to Europe, whether you're going around and you're looking at just amazing landscapes and, and the beautiful environment that we look at and God's planet and everything that's been created here and my way to you know just be thankful for that and stay rooted in what's uh, what really matters is painting the florals so the florals for me is just an, a wonderful opportunity to um, just stay very, very grateful for those memories and sitting around those tables over dinner. And I'm just really enjoying those times with family and just being rooted in wisdom and truth that my grandfather was uh, downloading to me. Hey, this is Noah. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you stopping by the gallery here and spending a few minutes and getting to know each other. Wherever you're at right now, I hope you've enjoyed yourself. You can find everything you'd like to see at noahfineart.com. And I look forward to talking to you soon. Thanks.